All right, so today I am going to be talking to you all about how to create a Zen space. I have 10 tips because one of you asked me to share my top tips on how to have a Zen home. While I'm doing that, I already had to make some concoctions for the day. Hey, Yolanda, hey, Nicole. Um, I had to make some fire cider and I have to make some elderberry tincture because I usually make them every year or my sister will make them for me. And those are just some things that I use for immunity so that we don't get sick and we're running low. So I'm gonna make that today while I talk to you guys about how you can create a Zen space for your home. So the first thing I'm gonna do really quickly is make the elderberry tincture because it's the easier, the easiest. And so I like to use this big jar here. I got these jars. I think there was like a set of two for $24 on Amazon. All you need to make the elderberry tincture is some dried elderberries and some vodka. So this vodka from Costco is like $12.99. You're gonna need about half the bottle of that and about a cup of the elderberries, but I'm gonna use probably about two cups of them. So anyway, the first thing that you need to do in order to create a Zen-like home is you need to understand how lighting works. Lighting is gonna create the mood for your home. During the daytime, you're going to want a home that's going to have a lot of natural light. But at nighttime, you're gonna to wanna to understand what kind of light you prefer. Greg and I do not agree on the kind of lighting that we like for our home. I like a more white natural light and he likes um, more like yellow traditional light bulb type light. The yellow light is gonna give you a warmer hue. The uh, light that I kind of like, the bright lights are gonna keep things bright and help, I feel like, regulate your um, circadian rhythms and also help things look the way that they should be like natural colors it doesn't distort colors in your home so the first thing you need to create your Zen home is you need some good lighting also while I'm doing that with the elderberry so as you can see I put about two cups of elderberries into the big jar I'm also gonna add some cloves to the jar what you want to do when you're making your tincture is you want to put whatever spices you think are gonna be helpful for your immune system. So in this one, I'm gonna be putting cinnamon, cloves, and some nutmeg into the elderberry tincture. And then I'll show you the fire cider. It's gonna be a totally different type of a recipe. All right, so lighting. And I'm just eyeballing it. Maybe I poured about maybe a quarter of this bottle in here. You end up straining all of this once the recipe is done, so you don't need to worry about chopping things up or what it looks like or anything like that. You, when you get done, you're gonna strain it through a cheesecloth in about six weeks, and when you do that, it'll just be a liquid. So put whatever you want in it. Um, cinnamon. And Again, I'm just kind of eyeballing it, personal taste, but I'd say if you were going to make this on your own, maybe you could put about, what is this, four ounces, so maybe a couple ounces. Of course, if you don't like cinnamon, don't put a lot of cinnamon. And then the nutmeg, I'm just going to put maybe a tablespoon or two. All right, so second thing that you need to understand if you wanna create a Zen-like home is you have to buy things for your home that are serene. So for us, that means things that we love. That means not wasting money on things that don't have meaning or value or just because they're on sale, we buy them or just because we think we like them, we buy them. It's actually about buying things that create serenity, so candles. Um, and what do those candles smell like? You may want to study aromatherapy a little bit so you can understand maybe for your kitchen you want a lemon candle because it's more cleansing, whereas for a bedroom you may want like a more lavender or spa type of candle. So that's another thing that you want to consider when you are creating your home, serene stuff. I'm trying to think of other serene things. 
we have a lot we have salt lamps so a lot of lamp lighting might be helpful for you if you're trying to create serene environments greg you're looking at me did you have an idea <laughs> i'm just for if i can oh yeah okay so okay yeah i have all that okay so the third thing that you want to do is make sure that you don't have any clutter in your home a lot of people don't understand that even if your home is not messy if you have a lot of clutter it doesn't give your eye an opportunity to rest and if your eye is not resting then it can cause you to always be on even though you're really not on and so if you have any clutter sitting out any unnecessary things sitting at that you don't have to look at then you may want to put that stuff away we keep out mostly things that are things that we use every day besides our decorations we don't have a lot of clutter sitting around so my third tip is to not have any clutter and I'm just going to show you real quickly. So the vodka is in here, the elderberries, all of the spices are in here. I did add peppercorns to this. Um, hey, Eregi. Um, I added peppercorns to this and then you just give it a shake. I shake it probably once a week. And again, like it'll take about maybe six weeks, three to six weeks, but I just wait six weeks until I strain this and use it. So next up, we're going to do the fire cider, which is also going to help you with some things that can naturally boost your immunity. And while I do that again, let's see. Tip number four to creating a Zen environment is you need to buy what you love. A lot of people spend a lot of money on things they don't love. Maybe you settle instead of saving up for what it is that you really want. Maybe you don't go for um, quality items, you go for things that are on sale. And so you get things that you don't love a lot. All of those are things that can impact the serenity and the zen of your home. And so if I would say one thing, buy what you love. Greg and I have noticed that we both used to buy a lot of stuff that we didn't need. And so we will often bounce ideas off of each other that Maybe just because something is cute, it doesn't mean that it has a place in our home. So if we don't love it, we are learning to not be tied to those type of things. So that is the fourth tip. While I move on to the fifth tip, I'm gonna move on to the fire cider. So fire cider is something that can be used to boost your immunity, especially through um, seasons where respiratory infections are more prominent which is usually around the winter months. However, with all the stuff that we have, have going on, it's probably going to be okay to take year round. You also can use it on um, salads, like a salad dressing. It kind of has a little tangy salad dressing taste, so you can do that. I'm going to be putting in two oranges, two lemons, some ginger root, a ton of garlic for ginger root i'm going to be using three ounces of ginger root and cutting it up you don't you, all this stuff you only have to coarsely chop because at the end of six weeks you're also going to strain this as well so the ginger root is three ounces the garlic is three ounces which was about three heads of garlic then there's three jalapenos fresh parsley thyme what else do i have here rosemary and onion also spices there will be peppercorns in this recipe as well turmeric cayenne pepper and then at the end once you've chopped everything up you're going to pour apple cider vinegar all over it okay i feel like we're all over the place but we're going to keep going so i'm about to chop up the um, oranges while i tell you tip number five is color psychology you have to look around the rooms in your home or your home as a whole and understand how you want your home to feel when you walk into your home and when other people walk into your home as well. And part of that is the colors that you use in your home. You will only know what that's going to be for you. Like for instance, you may want your bedroom to be calming and serene. And so you may do some blues, some grays, some colors like that. Or you may like to feel like when you walk in your home, you want it to have 
this feeling of giving you a hug. And if that's the case, then you're going to want to do some earth tones, some warm tones, etc. Um, again, for me, I tend to like more cooler tones. So you're going to see me do light grays. Like we have to paint this room here. You can kind of see here, this brown was the brown that came with the home. But I want a really light gray, almost white, because I want all of the things that we love and we've purchased in our home to be the, um, to tell the story of our home, not the paint on the wall. But I also want that to be cool because this home gets a lot of natural light and I just want that to be even more bright. If you feel like your home is too bright, then you may want to bring in darker colors to make it more subdued. If you don't feel like you have a lot of light, then you may not want to go for dark colors if you're somebody that feels like you get a little bit down or depressed when you're not around a lot of bright natural light or color. So you have to think about color psychology and that may be different for each area of your home, right? Because there's some colors that make you hungry some colors that make you calm some colors that make you happy and you can play around with that on your walls or you can play around with that like i said you use your walls as a more neutral color and then the things that you buy for your home will be the accents and you can use color psychology to help determine what color those things should be so that is my next tip for how to create a zen home and I'll make sure I list these as well because I know there's a lot going on. So I already chopped up the oranges. I'm gonna do the lemons. By the way, all this stuff is washed off. Make sure you wash off your produce. All right, so two lemons. Next up, Greg had mentioned this as well. We have a lot of nature in our house. So we mix glam, we mix fabrics. We have like linen fabrics. We have fake fur fabrics. But we also have pieces of nature in our home. We have a lot of wood in our home. We have reclaimed wood in our home. Greg made a wine rack once out of driftwood. So we have recycled things in our home. We also have plants in our home, crystals everywhere in this house. Um, trying to think of what else, if you want a easy plant to start off with because maybe you feel like you kill plants i am going to be posting a video on wednesday about a easy plant that you can buy once and then you can make many plants from it over and over and over by just taking off some of the leaves and making new plants with it so stay tuned for that we have the dry eucalyptus i'm trying to look around what other nature um greg has antlers i think he found them? You didn't kill anything, did you? Well. Somebody these, might come for us. These I found. Yeah. No. These I found. We eat meat here, so he probably killed them. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, oh, sheds. They're called sheds. Yeah. We have sheds around our home. I'm trying to think of any more nature. I think that's all the nature that we have. Um. All right, so next I'm putting in the garlic. I have the garlic in cloves here, but what I'm gonna do is just roughly chop it a little bit. Again, you don't have to be chopping this stuff too much because it's gonna ferment in this solution for six weeks, so you're gonna be okay. Don't try to be perfect. What else? This is the number one way you're gonna get your Zen home because I've been in many, many homes and people that I tend to attract and hang out with are people that have good energy and all of them have phenomenal homes in their own right, but it's 99% of the time because they have good energy. So you can buy all the fabrics, the candles, the crystals, you can get all the plants, but if the energy in your home is not zen because the people that live in the home are not zen, then you're gonna have an issue there. So work on yourself. And if you have a choice on who you let in your home, who's living in your home, then also work on fostering relationships with people that are working on themselves. They have good mindset. They don't have drama. 
all that type of stuff because at the end of the day again that is what is going to primarily make your home feel zen feel peaceful feel relaxed greg and i are both peaceful quiet people we don't have a lot of drama we don't do that kind of stuff very well and so that's primarily why when you walk in our house you can feel the energy of our house we don't need to go around saging stuff because it's just not a lot of negativity we have good boundaries around the people that we allow in our house and in our home and that's primarily what's going to give you the type of vibes that you want if you're trying to create a home that feels good and feels peaceful and feels like a sanctuary for you to come home to at the end of the day so i'm just throwing in this rosemary just kind of coarsely chopped um all right what tip are we on i think we're on number seven for how to create a zen like home that it has to do with quality for quality, I kind of touched on it before. You don't have to spend a lot of money on to have quality items in your home, but you have to understand the different qualities of the things that you buy for your home. So for instance, for sheets, you, you're gonna wanna understand thread counts. And if you don't, then you're gonna be buying sheets that may not feel luxurious or may, like, may not feel zen. And I think that that's part of the reason why people may struggle with trying to get that feel at home. So buy quality items. If you have to save up, save up. There are times when I have had to go without and I would have, and I'm glad that I went without instead of just buying any cheap old thing. Um, number one, you end up saving more money in the long run. Number two, you get what you really love. And number three, because you saved up and you feel good and it's the thing that you really wanted in the first place, it creates a positive energy in your home. So make sure that you are purchasing quality items. Um, let's see. The eighth tip is do highs and lows so in the same token while i'm talking about spending money or buying quality items and knowing what quality means that means even quality pots and pans that means studying who um, makes the best knives and if you have to save up to buy those type of things then you're not wasting money on a knife set because it was a hundred bucks you might only be able to afford one knife that's a hundred bucks but it's a nice quality knife that'll last you the rest of your life However, there are things in your home that aren't gonna matter so much. And on those things, don't spend all your money on them. So um, I feel like a couch, a mattress, a bed, things like that are things that you spend money on. But things that you maybe don't wanna spend a lot of money on are candles, um, pillows. What else would you, I don't think you need to spend a lot of money on plants. Um, let me look around. I'm just looking around certain like towels like I think maybe your bath towel towels can be quality but maybe like your kitchen towels don't have to be that much what else you can furniture. yeah you can repurpose furniture can you give us an example uh, paint. oh like painting it yeah yeah, that is a good idea because maybe you are on a budget and you don't have the money to go out and spend for a nice quality, let's say, for instance, wooden piece of furniture. But maybe you can go to a secondhand store, find that a similar look, but you may just have to do some alterations or paint it or whatever in order for it to, you know, match the style of what you're looking for. Let's see. And then I just have one more. I already talked about crystals. I was saying that we have a lot of spiritual items in our home. We're very spiritual in a different way. Um, like we have Bibles around our home. I already talked about the crystals, tarot cards. What else? We have incense that we burn regularly. We have diffusers with aromatherapy. Again, all these are gonna help you set the mood to, for your home based on the scents that you choose. So make sure you study what 
the feel is that you want for a certain room in your home and then make sure that the scents of your candles and things correspond to what it is that you're trying to create i'm trying to see if i left anything out i don't think that i did greg do you do you think i left anything out no we have stuff that from people that we love so we have bulletin boards with people's pictures. We have Greg's dad's aunt in here. We have paintings that our nieces and nephews have given us. So we make sure to infuse that more natural creativity. Greg has art around the house. Like all of those things put our personal touch on the house. Again, bringing in the positive energy of not only ourselves, but the people that we choose to be around us that love us and that we love because they're good people. And subconsciously, that energy feeds into the positivity of our home. Like oh, music. Music creates a Zen home. That's a good one, Greg. <laughs> so for music though again try to buy the best quality that you can buy if you're listening to music on a crappy speaker then you're probably not going to enjoy it and it's not going to make you feel as luxurious as if you maybe splurged a little bit not spending a lot of money but maybe looking for quality what what is the best quality that you can buy and investing in that way um, because there's a big difference between maybe like a speaker that was on sale for 20 bucks versus, um, I don't know, a Marshall or something like that or Bose or something like that. So make sure that you're paying attention to that stuff when you buy music. You got one? You don't have to have the couch up next to Greg. Oh, <laughs> Greg has a design tip. It's a pet peeve of both of ours. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have your... Um, this is you can break up the room so a lot of people when they buy like set up their living room they put all the couches against the wall and you don't need to do that and in fact you should look at the specifications that your tv gives you for how far your couch should be from your tv and you should follow those in order to create more flow in your room so instead of anchoring our couch to a wall our couch is the distance that it should be from the tv but it is also floating on a rug in the middle of the room which brings up another fact when you're trying to create a zen home and you want to play with texture get some rugs get some blankets get them in various colors get them in various textures because that's going to help make it a sensual experience for you to be able to, you know, like touch along with the other things we mentioned, smell. What else? Anything else? Mm. Yeah. All right. I've been blabbing. <laughs> so I'm going to finish making a fire cider. So, so far, this is what I have in the jar. Um, again, I just cut everything up. I'm now on the onions, have the jalapenos left, and then I'm going to put in the turmeric and the cayenne, and then I will pour in the apple cider at the end. But I'll leave the camera on really quickly just so you can see it since I'm almost done. So hopefully this was helpful. I will run down the list again, and then I will also place it in the description box in case it's hard for you to keep up. So 10 tips to help you create a more zen home lighting pay attention to your lighting and what kind of mood you want to create with the lighting buy things that are serene candles aromatherapy diffusers those type of things that actually directly impact your mood your well-being because that is how you can <laughs> that is how you manipulate your home to be able to create different moods get rid of the clutter because clutter definitely even if you don't understand it will create a lot of movement with your eye and that movement movement with your eye takes away from you being able to relax so if you have a lot of if you have any clutter if you can put stuff away put stuff away if you don't need it get rid of it um buy what you love so if it's on clearance and you don't need it and you don't love it, every time you pick something up for your home, ask yourself if you love it. And if you don't love it, don't waste your money on it. 
color psychology what is the type of mood that you want to create with your home nature bring elements of nature into your home for a more sensual experience and it actually brings in more grounding energy into your home which is more zen and serene because it's centering the number one thing even though i don't have it listed number one is what is the mood of the people in the house none of these things are going to matter if you don't work on your mood quality by the best quality that you can i don't and quality does not does not correlate to cost is that the right word quality and cost don't have to be um related however you need to understand what quality means in pots and pens and knives and sheets and towels and try to buy the best quality you can from that space highs and lows save up for the things that are that you're going to be using a lot um, we just read a quote that someone said if your butt is going to be on or your back or the closest to the ground that they are then you should invest the most money like your mattress um, your shoes your couch that type of stuff um, but then the other stuff you don't have to spend a lot of money on and in fact that would give you some flexibility to change out the moods with the pillows the blankets um, the accent pieces and that type of thing and then lastly we just have a lot of spiritual items around our home because that's who we are so we have crystals bibles we have um, tarot cards what else do we have oh we have like quote cards inspirational quote cards things like that that just kind of help bring more serenity into our home so if you have any questions let me know let me finish popping all this up so i can show you the end results of this fire cider that will also take about six weeks to what would that be called like ferment i don't know I'm not even taking the seeds out of the jalapenos, so hopefully it's going to be okay. And that's the turmeric. And I probably put in about maybe half an ounce you can use root too if you want to i just don't have that so i'm not using that and then cayenne i'm not gonna put a whole lot because i already put the jalapenos and i'm not a spicy type of person so maybe about a teaspoon all right and then lastly you just want to pour in your apple cider vinegar and you want to try to cover all of the ingredients um this has to you have to get the one with the mother for it to be the most healthy so all of your ingredients are in here you're going to take your apple cider just going to pour it in here you'll have to let it settle for a little bit because all of these different things are creating little air pockets within it but it will start to settle and break down probably in about a week or so when you shake it and it should be okay <laughs> um i'm actually i'm making um fire cider i just made some elderberry tincture in the beginning of the video and now i'm making the finish putting the finishing touches on the fire cider and you probably already know but they're both for immunity and either i make it every year or my sister makes it for me but i've run out or i'm going to be running out soon and this takes about six weeks to like sit and ferment and so i'm making some more all right so the apple cider is all in here now and then all you have to do is put the jar on it and like I said, it'll start to break down in a week or so. But once a week, you're going to take both jars and you're just going to kind of give them a shake. And once you give them a shake, um, then you just let them sit again. And you let them sit for about six weeks. You give them a shake maybe once or twice a week. And then at the end, you will have two very different drinks or tinctures, but they both will help you with fighting immunity. Um, 
And if you have any questions about that, let me know. And also, um, Ashley, we were talking about how to create a Zen space because somebody asked me that. So I gave my top tips on how to create a Zen like home. All right. Any questions, let me know. I will talk to you guys later. I'm about to go make dinner now. Bye.